In this video, we're going to talk about a common disorder that can affect your sleep quality and make it harder to fall asleep. That is restless leg syndrome. Do you ever feel like you just can't get comfortable or you can't sit still or you just can't find the right position when you're going to sleep? If so, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can keep on learning about sleep and optimal mental health. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I am a physician specializing in integrative psychiatry and sleep medicine. This channel is all about holistic science-based strategies to optimize your sleep quality and your mental well-being. Every video also contains a tip for physicians and healthcare practitioners. Before we jump into the video, if you are a physician or a healthcare provider, I'd like to invite you to grab my free sleep mini course called Clinical Pearls for Outpatient Doctors. And this course is filled with practical tips that you can use in your clinical practice today. The link to the free mini course is in the video description under this video. This is the second video in our three-part series on common sleep disorders. If you haven't already seen it, go ahead and check out the first one on obstructive sleep apnea. Restless leg syndrome is one of those conditions that people aren't really sure is real. But the thing is, it is very real and it can be very debilitating for some people. Restless leg syndrome is also known as Willis-Eckbaum disease. Restless leg syndrome is a common sleep-related movement disorder. However, even though it's a sleep disorder, it actually happens when you are awake. There is its counterpart called periodic limb movement disorder, which happens during sleep, but restless leg syndrome is a disorder that happens during wakefulness. And it is characterized by discomfort, usually in the legs. So you might feel creepy crawlies or itching or crawling or a pulling sensation and an urge to get up and move around. And it usually starts in the evening hours or when you're lying down in bed. You have this urge to wiggle your toes or get up and even walk around. And it can feel really uncomfortable, like you're jumping out of your own skin. Who experiences restless leg syndrome? It's estimated that about five to 15% of adults experience this, but it can also happen in kids. In the United States, estimates say that about two to 4% of children experience restless leg syndrome. It's more common in women, especially because it does happen frequently during pregnancy. It's also found to be more common in older adults and in people of Northern European ancestry. What causes restless leg syndrome? Well, it's not fully understood, but it is thought that it's related to low iron levels in the central nervous system. So there is a blood test you can do by checking your ferritin levels and your iron levels to see if that could be an indicator of low iron stores. It's also thought that restless leg syndrome is related to dysfunction in the dopamine system. That also might be related to low iron. This is not quite fully understood yet. However, this is why medications that work on dopamine are often used in the treatment of this disorder. What makes restless leg syndrome worse? Well, as I mentioned, it can get worse during pregnancy. Certain medical conditions like kidney disease or iron deficiency or nephropathy can make the symptoms worse. There is a strong genetic component. So about 40 to 60% of people who have this also have a first degree relative with this condition. Other things that can make it worse are alcohol, caffeine, and nicotine. Certain medications like antidepressants and antihistamines can also worsen the symptoms. And then stress, sleep deprivation, and being sedentary can also exacerbate the symptoms. If this information is helpful for you, go ahead and give me a thumbs up by clicking the like button. What makes the symptoms better? Taking iron can sometimes make the symptoms better, especially if the person has symptoms and their ferritin level is less than 75. Avoiding aggravating factors like caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol can also help reduce the symptoms. Getting regular exercise can be helpful, and so can taking a warm bath in the evening or doing a massage on your legs in the evening. Pneumatic compression can also be helpful. This is where you wear a device that compresses and relaxes and kind of gives your legs a bit of a massage. There are also two FDA approved devices. One is a foot wrap and the other one is a vibrating pad. And then of course, a healthy diet that is rich in vitamins and minerals is helpful for so many conditions. And this includes restless leg syndrome. 
A diet that is rich in minerals and vitamins like magnesium and zinc and vitamin D is important. It's thought that maybe imbalances in magnesium and zinc and vitamin D can also make the symptoms worse. This needs to be evaluated further. More studies are needed to really understand this, but you want to make sure you're consuming a diet that is rich in vitamins and minerals. And then in some cases, medications may be considered depending on the severity of symptoms. Here is your tip for physicians and healthcare practitioners. Dopaminergic drugs are a common class of drug that's used for restless leg syndrome, and augmentation is one of the primary complications of using these types of drugs. Augmentation refers to increases in the symptoms of restless leg syndrome, usually associated with increased doses of dopaminergic medications. So you might see that symptoms start earlier in the evening or that the symptoms spread to other areas of the body like the trunk or the upper extremities. Or you might notice that the drug doesn't have as long a duration of action or that overall symptoms just become more intense. So if your patients are taking dopaminergic medications and they have symptoms of restless leg syndrome, do be on the lookout for augmentation. Restless leg syndrome is one of these things that can make it harder to fall asleep. If you are having trouble falling asleep, it's worth having a conversation with your doctor to look under the hood a little bit and see what the underlying causes might be. I always recommend that before jumping straight to sleeping pills, which can sometimes make things worse in the long run. And I do have a video on that if you're interested in learning more. If you think you might have symptoms of restless leg syndrome, do talk to your doctor about that and see if checking your iron and ferritin levels might be a good place to start. And for all you doctors out there, don't forget to consider restless leg syndrome in your differential diagnosis with patients who have sleep onset insomnia. Do you have any questions? Go ahead and drop them in the comments and let me know. And then stay tuned for part three in this three-part series on common sleep disorders.